it's Eno, and I'm back at it again with another tag because I just can't resist. You've probably seen this one making the rounds on TarotTube lately. It's a pretty recent tag. It was created by all of our TarotTube friends over at the TarotTube Discord, and it's called One Deck Gone Wild, I believe. And it's just a really fun tag. It's very low stakes. It's just silly. Bring some much needed levity to the general atmosphere at this moment. And it's just a really great, it's really accessible. You only need one deck. It's just a really great way to jump into the deck of your choice and just do a deep dive, but also be really silly about it. It's really fun if you like to personify your decks, and I know I do. So, yeah, there's all sorts of questions. You don't have to answer all of them. I think I'm going to answer like 20... 20-odd 20 questions. Oh, before that, I did bring along a little friend to accompany us while we do this tag. His name is Pablo. So, Pablo's going to sit here on the sidelines cheering us on so i've chosen the elf of heaven tarot and the first question is why did you pick this deck so my answer is pretty simple and straightforward i haven't seen this deck on tarot tube yet and i want to so i'm putting it out there i'm giving it 15 minutes of fame it deserves it yeah i'm just giving it some much needed exposure and I just think it's, I don't know, it's just a really fun deck. I thought this would be, it would be a perfect deck for this kind of tag because it just has so much personality. And I was going to get a lot out of these questions with it. So yeah, it's just, I think it's the perfect deck for this tag. And it's really, it's really fun to look at. So the second question is, what is your favorite set of minors? So I'm in between the aces and sevens. So we have aces, ace of cups, ace of swords, ace of wands, and ace of pentacles. And I just love the colors. There's so many oranges and reds, pinky reds, yellows, I don't know, they just, the contrast of like, the juxtaposition of orange and pink is, is a combination that I never thought I, I needed in my life. And now that I have this deck, I'm realizing how good it is. I love the little palm trees, the beach here, and the ace of pentacles, and the, the sand dunes, I think they're like, I think they're sand dunes. And the faces on the mountains and the Ace of Swords. And then this little pixie fella. Yeah. You can see. And yeah, just, I mean, this is a very Rider Waite Smith deck. It's not a Rider Waite Smith clone because it, def it definitely, um, definitely has its own approach. But, it is very much based on the Rider Waite Smith, so still pretty recognizable aces, but they just stand out to me. I feel like they just represent, like each ace represents just pure energy of the stack um, condensed into one card. And then the sevens, they have like really, they kind of have like very magical girl vibes, so seven of cups seven of pentacles i love this one the seven of wands and the seven of swords so we have like i love the outfits i think i just i want to own all of these outfits and i don't know like the cat girl in the seven of pentacles um again the orange and the pink it just it works it works and then the the little this little hat that she's wearing this outfit just 
I want all of it really. I just, yeah, I want to look like that. I want to dress like this on a regular basis. And then how about this Lolita get up in the Seven of Swords and the bubbles in the sky? I don't know, just, it just amuses me. <laughs> It really tickles my funny bone. So, next question is, your favourite representation of the colour blue? Um, there isn't actually a ton of blue in this deck. There are like baby blues, sky blues, kind of mixed in. Um, usually with like pink or lilac or orange, you know. But I think this the hermit is one of the few cards in the deck that just has this like uninterrupted this like uninterrupted expanse of blue and it's so perfect because it really sets the ambience for this card um compositionally this is this is a great card it's like compositionally it's amazing um but also the contrast between like the kind of like the orangey yellow and this this shade of blue is like they're complementary colors, right? So they're like they're like a match made in heaven, and it's just really good, like color composition and um, overall composition. Um, I don't know. The blue kind of reminds me, like it looks like it's not quite nightfall, like it's it's that time of day where it's. I guess you'd call it twilight. Um, and it's that kind of liminal time and space that feels kind of fitting for the hermit because solitude does feel quite liminal at times doesn't it so it's just this perfect ambience in this card that the blue just is really like the protagonist in this card okay what is your favorite representation of insert card here and that would be the wheel of fortune because it looks like a good old time. <laughs> it looks like a ride I'd never want to get off. And it just makes a card that is usually so serious, it makes it so silly. <laughs> like, all these little, all these little critters. I mean, <laughs> I just, I don't know. I just love it. <laughs> it's so silly. It looks like it looks like a really silly game show is going on in the clouds. <laughs> it doesn't feel like it doesn't feel severe like the Wheel of Fortune often does. So I really like this Wheel of Fortune. So what card makes you feel nostalgic? Um this is a really funny one. <laughs> Like, the reason is, is really funny. Um, it's the Empress. So. This, for me, feels like the ball pit. <laughs> it feels, yeah, it, it reminds me of the ball pit. <laughs> I used to play in when I was, like, um, a toddler. I mean, it literally is a ball pit, right? <laughs> That's what it is. Um, yeah. <laughs> so that one's a really silly one. Favourite animal that's represented? So there's a lot of little critters in this deck, as you can see from the Magician and the Wheel of Fortune. There's loads of little guys and little fellas <laughs> um, dotted about this deck. But some of my favorite animals, because I have several, I can't pick just one. Um, some of my favorite animal depictions in this deck, although I don't know if they really count as animals, um, maybe more so fantasy creatures, but like this dragon in the King of Swords. I mean, come on. Um, oh. <laughs> Uh, um, I have something to say about this one um, later, in a later prompt, um, but <laughs> this dog is just so grumpy, 
it looks so annoyed. This lion that kind of reminds me of the the wolves in Princess Mononoke, if you've seen that film, kind of has a similar vibe um, to Princess Mononoke. This dog in the fall with the little fez. <laughs> um, these little, uh, I mean, I don't know, that looks like a pig. I, I don't know what this is. They could be Pokemon for I know. <laughs> um but yeah love them and this this poor little this poor little puppy this poor little dog that's down on its lock i just wanna i just wanna take it in <laughs> i feel so bad for it which card constantly follows you appears from this deck so generally the high priestess does pop up for me a lot but yeah this high priestess very like sailor moon-esque right um and i'll get to that i'll get to sailor moon again later next if you made this deck a meal what would it be so i would personally make this deck some crunchy duck pancakes with hoisin sauce or anything that you'd find in a pastisserie or patisserie i don't know um like you know like a like a fruit tartlet anything with like strawberries whipped cream uh a macaron <laughs> um yeah like uh french pastries crunchy duck crunchy chicken as well with like ramen noodles um udon noodles that kind of thing but i feel like what this deck really wants is just a good old fashioned mukbang <laughs> just a good old fashioned like fast food mukbang with loads of carbonated fizzy drinks i feel like that is the meal that this deck wants <laughs> What is this deck's favourite book? So I feel like it'd be a manga. Um, and I feel like maybe it'd be Nana because of the style. Maybe there are some there's some overlap and I don't know, like the, the punky, I feel like it would look up to Nana as a role model. This like punky fashionista. This deck very much falls in line with the aesthetic of that manga, so yeah, I feel like this deck would love to this deck would definitely, like, I feel like Nana, the character, would read with this deck. So it goes the other way as well, right? <laughs> this deck would love to read Nana. Okay. If you were to travel anywhere, where would you take this deck? And also, where does the deck want to go? So I feel like it'd be the same, be the same places. So um, very different cultures of course um different countries but i feel like where it feels most it would feel most at home would be of course taiwan but then uh, maybe singapore and south korea so that's where i i've never been to any of those countries so i'd love to go obviously and i think this deck would be a perfect fit for my travels there which card would you hang in x room of your house Oh, I mean, I'd love to hang any of these, really, but for me, it has to be the Queen of Pentacles. Yep. Um, I'd hang this maybe over my bed, by my bed, or by my, um, my tarot desk, my altar. Um, yeah, no, probably my bedroom, I think. I love it. <laughs> I love this so much. It's, I mean, it's stunning. <laughs> Something that sets the deck apart. I mean, just look at it. <laughs> if this deck could have one superpower, what would it be? 
I feel like I can't pick between either so either flight um supersonic speed or shape-shifting I don't know it, it'd be it's between those three but I don't know which one maybe maybe shape-shifting actually yeah this feels like the kind of deck that would that would do that <laughs> what card would be your pet so back to this card um i mean obviously i'd want to take this little this little doggy in um but um uh, i'd want to have this as a pet <laughs> i'd want to have them as a pet but i don't know if they'd let themselves be a pet i don't know if i could domesticate them i mean i guess that's kind of the whole point of the strength card right but um I don't know if they appreciate being called or being treated as a pet. <laughs> but um, I think it has to be this dog. <laughs> it just looks so annoyed. And I feel it. I, I really, I really feel for it. I, I can relate. Yeah, I... It just looks so annoyed. Yeah. <laughs> What's the deck's biggest fear? I feel like that would be living in a world without color. Yeah. So if the deck had its own collection, what would it be? Probably like trading cards stickers um and tamagotchis yeah <laughs> definitely tamagotchis and stickers um i used to be a sticker hound <laughs> when i was a kid i mean there definitely was like you know there were like playground crazes and um one of them was stickers and the other one was tamagotchis and they both had their 15 minutes of fame and i definitely i might have bought into both of them i might have definitely um gotten swept away with both of those crazes um i i really miss stickers collecting i really miss collecting stickers um i feel like if it was easier or like as easy as it was back then um it probably be more accessible to me um to collect and i think i think what's fun about collecting stickers is the trading aspect not so much the actual like getting the stickers but like trading them in for like and we had like a system we had like a bartering system where like three like shiny stickers was equivalent to like one fuzzy sticker. So we we definitely had a system going on and that was the funnest part, like trying to work out if you were gonna get a really good deal on a sticker. But yeah, I miss sticker collecting. <laughs> okay, so this is probably my favorite one. Draw three random cards and play bed, wed, or behead. So, Okay, bed, wed, or behead. Oh, I did forget to answer. Um, if I could change anything about the deck, what would it be? I think probably the cardstock. I think a lot, like, I feel like a lot of people say the cardstock is like the number one thing they change about the deck, about any given deck. But I, yeah, I don't know. This, Cardstock is kind of like, I don't know, it's very, it's very plasticky. Okay, so, um, 
Fuck, marry, kill. <laughs> Bird, where the head? Okay. Okay, so bed, wed, and behead. Let's look at what we got. Strength. Ooh, the queen of swords. And the five of swords. So, I feel like I'd see I don't want to marry an animal um I mean I think ethically that's not um <laughs> yeah that, that crosses way too many lines so um unfortunately I would have to behead strength sorry and oh this is really difficult because I I don't feel particularly I don't feel particularly drawn to any of these cards, but I guess if I had to, I'd probably just one night stand this guy. <laughs> just um, get in there, get out, <laughs> get it over with, um, forget about it. Um, yeah, because I don't feel like this guy would be very much fun to be around for a prolonged period of time. Um, I feel like he would start a lot of petty arguments and always, always have the need to be right about everything. So I don't think I could be able to stand this guy more than like a few minutes, which incidentally is exactly how long it would last to bed him. <laughs> um, and yeah, I would marry the Queen of Swords because, because she slays. What can I say? She slays. Okay, that was really fun. So, what's the deck's signature favorite scent or flavor, etc.? So, I'm not an expert in scents, like at all. So, I maybe guess a kind of citrusy scent, like anything that has either citrus in it um a citrusy smell or anything that says strawberry on the label i feel like that would be the go-to for this deck okay so who is the deck in love with so going back to the earlier prompt of who what book this deck would read um I bet this deck has a huge crush on Nana, um, one of the protagonists of Nana. <laughs> um, and Sailor Moon, of course. Like, duh. Yeah. <laughs> okay. How old does the deck believe it is? So, ageless, but a child at heart forever a child. What is the gender of the deck or does the deck identify as a gender? Um, I mean, I'd say it's like non-binary, probably. Definitely feels like a deck that doesn't really give a fuck for, <laughs> um, doesn't really give a fuck about the gender binary. Yeah, um, yeah, a, a deck, this is a deck that definitely blurs the lines when it comes to gender. So, yeah, I don't think it has a gender. I mean, I, I think it's like, I just think it's non-binary. Um, not to put like a specific label on it, but I just, I'd say it's probably non-binary. What card in this deck do you feel gives a unique spin on your regular opinion of that card? So, I'd say the tower because of one little detail. Um, let's see if I can find it. Love this Knight of Pentacles. 
such a heartthrob. <laughs> um, okay, so the tower um, is interesting because both of the figures that are falling are wearing helmets. So it almost implies that they are throwing themselves from the tower um, consciously. Um, and, you know, there's also this aspect of, like, survival, of, like, um, something that is, seems like something, a tower moment that almost feels like you won't survive it in the moment, but you will. And it's like, you have everything you need to, to survive, to move on to rebuild right you have your helmet um you're not really in any serious danger it is like earth shattering in the moment but you will survive you will move on so i don't know that's an interesting perspective on the tower i think which card or cards in this deck makes you laugh so i mean a lot of these like a lot of the ones that I showed you before, but um, the, yeah, I, ha I have to go back to the, I mean this one, because like, what is this? What does this hairdo? <laughs> what is this hairdo? <laughs> but also, yeah, this is like so Sailor Moon. <laughs> But, um, oh god, I can't find it now. Um, hang on. Okay. This card. These, these guys. And, of course, <laughs> going back to this one. Yeah. <laughs> I think I've said all I need to say on this card. Um, just appreciate it. <laughs> Okay, and finally, what is this deck's favourite tarot deck? So, um, I've got two. So, one of them I don't have in my collection, but it's the, I feel like the, the perfect answer would be the Phantasmagoric Theatre tarot. Um, I'll pop a picture up on the screen. That would be like the, that would be the official answer. But um, in terms of like what deck I have in my collection that I feel like would get along really well with this one, um, I think it'd be the the Dang Olsen Dream Tarot, probably. I feel like this deck would get a kick out of reading with this deck. <laughs> I feel like they'd be friends. Um, yeah, I feel like they are friends. If if I ever use them together, um, if I ever decide to use them together, um, and I probably will, I feel like they would get along. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah. Oh yeah. Absolutely. These would get on so well. Yeah, for sure. So yeah, um the Dang Olsen Dream Tower. I think is a good choice but if I could if I did have it in my collection I'd choose the phantasmagoric theater tarot um yeah I think that would be the perfect match okay so that brings us to the end hope this wasn't too long I really did try to speed through this one this time um unfortunately I'm it's just one of those days for me where I can't really talk really struggling with words and yeah I could have made this a lot more wordy and a lot more profound I guess 
Um, but I mean, I guess this is quite a silly deck. So how profound can it really be? <laughs> it's not supposed to be deep. Um, but yeah, I just felt like, I don't know. I just wanted to do it. Um, at least I've done it, right? It's not perfect. Um, I've been struggling a lot lately with like, um, like feelings of frustration with my with my videos and I, I posted something in my um, community tab about it but um, I'm trying not to be so hard on myself like this video is going to be far from perfect um, it's even going to be a little bit shoddy I think um, and honestly I would have preferred it to be I would have preferred if this had been like a lot more like some of the other videos that I've watched, I'll link my favourites down below. Um, they were just so much more insightful and entertaining, and I feel my like, I feel like mine was just there. <laughs> I don't feel like I, um, I don't know if I really did a good job of showcasing this deck. Um, I'll definitely bring it out a lot more um, on my channel, but. Yeah, I get, like I said, I'm trying not to be too hard on myself. It's just one of those days. Um, comment down below if you have days like that, um, where you just can't seem to get the right word in your mouth. I don't know. Does that happen to you? Because it happens to me a lot. And uh, I don't know. I just want to, let's just look at the imagery. Okay. <laughs> Let's just look at the images. Let's not think too much. So, yeah, that was the Elf of Heaven tarot. And yeah. Comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And I'll see you around.